Greetings, everyone. This is Rock and Roll Spot coming at you with the Willie Comic Bar. We've uh, covered some of this week. We've gotten started. Going through uh, this week's X Men books as well as uh, Marvel Space books. Now it's time to move on to this week's Avengers books. Kicking these off with Avengers number six. Where we left off, it appeared the Ashen Combine were. Uh, actually dealing with the Avengers fairly efficiently while uh, Captain America and Black Panther learned about learned more about the impossible city namely that it was uh, it had been uh, basically reprogrammed somewhat reprogrammed to uh, serve the whims of the Ashen Combine So, the issue begins with Cap and Black Panther telling the Impossible City that uh, you know, they, the Avengers will stand up to the, uh, the Ashen Combine. And so we begin in Vatican City with Thor dealing with... Uh, uh, I cannot remember the name of uh, that one's name, but dealing with his opponent that weaponizes worship. The more that worship it, the you know, the more powerful it becomes. Whereas Thor doesn't require worship. And if, say, everyone worshipping this being uh, were to fall asleep, well, no more worship. In Toronto, Iron Man is dealing with the city smith. Turns out he has uh, That there's a uh, project, it's, uh, it's an experimental project that worked into the, the Mark Mill. Sin flattery, sincerest form, presumably to copy the powers of uh, his fellow Avengers. But uh, he and he, Iron Man, copies the Vision's powers and they get loose and punch the. Uh, the city smith in the face. In Sydney, the Scarlet Witch is having to deal with her own demons on account of uh, another of the, of the Combine, which Sydney holds Rookwood Cemetery, home to one million graves. And so, the Scarlet Witch teleports the two of them to Antarctica where there are no graves in Helsinki um, Meridian Diadem is uh, dealt with by uh, the vision basically exposing part of uh, exposing it to uh, Ultron's code in Manila Lord Anui is uh, defeated by Captain Marvel. Basically, she uh, powered herself up to, a, to an intense degree. Uh, Idle Alabaster. That's the one. That's the name of the one that uh, Thor is facing. But uh, Captain Marvel powered power herself up uh, to an immense degree that deals with uh, Loran Yui. And for the first time in ages, he feels something. 
that he thanks her for it. And so, the Ashen Combine are, uh, are defeated. The, uh, the charges that uh, Black Panther and Captain America set on the Impossible City are uh, detonated, removing all of the uh, portion, all, all, everything that the Combine added to the city. Turns out that the Impossible City was initially um, a prison for the Ashen Combine, but they broke out and took and took it over. And the Impossible City states that um, it would like to be be an Avenger. No one seems to uh, have a problem with this. And so, the Impossible City becomes the Avengers' new headquarters. That's not, that's, that's where the main story is. We have a backup story focusing on uh, Firebird. In New Mexico, um, Firebird uh, overhears a uh, woman, a man in a church discussing a, uh, discussing something he's been dealing with. It appears that um, this man believes he's being punished by God. Said any angels to deal with her. Bright lights in the night sky. Firebird goes to investigate and runs into Captain's Marvel and America. Lights show up. Fall into Ros and so they fall into Roswell. Turns out that uh, Cadbury is not too uh, familiar with the ins and outs of UFO, uh, of the UFO lore, thinking that area Roswell is over Area 51. Now, he, he is probably corrected that Roswell is simply where the, you know, there was a, a UFO crash in the 40s. Turns out a young girl, um, her sister disappeared. Three lights are apparently drones. Not drone, not drones from Earth, but the young girl, uh, her, like her sister disappeared, and she was lonely. And was able to contact the drones with uh, a tech with her own, with you know her own. Uh, Inter her own interface, and uh, so Captain America puts in the information about uh, the girl's sister, so in the hopes of finding her soon. That is where the issue ends. Good story, good issue. Backup is backup is strong. Um, we're getting a few. We, we are getting a few. Uh, I do like that Marvel is starting to work backup stories featuring. Um, not a, less prominent uh, characters into uh, the regular titles. Um, it's something I think they should have been doing for a while. And it's something that, uh, honestly, the Distinguished Competition is doing occasionally, at least. But, uh, good wrap up to the first arc of uh, Jed McKay's Avengers run. Be interested to see how the rest of it plays out. Moving on, though, to our next book, we've got Blade, number four. Where we left off, Blade had learned that he needed to, uh, that in order to stop the Adana, he needs a weapon known as the Blade of, the Blade of Lucifer, which was Lucifer's flaming sword. It's in the uh, possession of, a, uh, of an arms dealer who doesn't have some... We never doesn't have some fortress that he calls home. No. He's a train. Constantly in motion. Doctor Strange has shown up, not happy that Blade uh, 
really see Adana, though. He's disappointed. He's not mad, just disappointed. So, Doctor Strange explains explains up the, the train. The train itself is made of adamantium. Uh, rarely slows below 100, 180 miles per hour. Strange can get them all on the train, but there should be resistance, heavy resistance inside. At least for the sword is among the other items there. Um, the task ahead of, of Blade and his uh, cohorts will be difficult. Strange aiding as, as he can. Blade goes to make introductions to introduce Strange to his uh, to his few partners and partners. And, well, Strange already knows exactly who they are. Tama Hamato, ali arms dealer, ali alias Tulip. History of trading enchanted weapons is the lowest and highest bidders. Distracting sexual tension between uh, her and Blade. And finally, Rotha, exiled member of, uh, of a militant mountain sect dedicated to stopping the coming of the Adana. Admires Blade in a misguided, near paternal way. When Tulip asks how uh, Strange knows about her and Blade, Strange simply states that he's a sorcerer supreme. It's his responsibility to know things. But before they go, uh, Blade does ask for further, further help, namely on Hamilton Achilles, well, the owner of the train, who had an owner of the sword. He's a vampire. Appear, it appears he seems to be uh, from the um, the Reaper line, Reaper or maybe the Reaver line from uh, Blade Two. You know the the mouths that that you know the they open at at the bottom and the, yeah. If you've seen Blade Two, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And so Blade's just like, oh, cool! I get to kill, I get to kill a vampire too. Awesome. Or rather, vampires, plural. So, they board, they board the train through a portal. Well, Blade, Tulip, and Rotha. Blade kills his way through through the various vampires. The train also has uh, kidnapping victims to be well feed to basically feed uh, Achilles and his people. But uh, Achilles calls to Blade. Rotha and Tulip manage to free the prisoners, taking out the various vampire guards. But uh, Achilles explains that uh, the creatures of the, of the dark can hear the Adana. Apparently, the Adana wants the blade to have Lucifer's sword, and rather than getting to end, rather than uh, being killed by Blade, Achilles commits suicide, sacrificing himself for the Adana. But uh, well, Lucifer's sword does have its uh, drawbacks. What, the wielder becomes uh, pr rather prideful. Strange. Uh, Strange tries to get Blade to give up the sword, but um, Blade's able to work through work through it, and he gets some advice on dealing with it from uh, from Strange. Adding that uh, when Blade feels the pride inside, inside him like snow falling over, over reason and judgment, well, just recall, remember that pride goes before the fall. Yeah, the issue ends with uh, the train derailing and Blade and his and his Blade Tulip and Rotha be standing before the Adana. And that is, 
leading up to the next issue's conclusion. All right, so, solid issue. I like the uh, the heist feel of it. Um, I can't say I'm, I'm entirely surprised that uh, the, the blade of Lucifer would have a uh, a mystical a mystical weapon would have a would have a drawback. They, you know, it's kind of par for the course. Mystical artifacts in general, weapon weapon weaponized or not, uh, always, almost always have a drawback. Moving on though to our next book, we've got Captain Marvel: Assault on Eden. Number, I believe this is the first issue. Right. Either way, it's number one. I, I cannot recall if it is a miniseries or. Well, let's see. It does seem to be a one shot, actually. Um. Carol is reflecting reflects a bit on her life, but. It, it, uh, she goes to on her way well, on her way to uh, Hala, the throne world of the Kree Skrull Alliance, which had been decimated by the Kree Supreme Intelligence during the Kree, Kree Shi'ar conflict. Reconstruction is complete, and well, first unification day. Year one, you know, year one, uh, Alliance reckoning. Um, now, to be fair, this potentially throws. Does cause some problems with the uh, current time with current uh, time points for the Marvel Universe, which, yeah, uh, and I'll be honest, it's the X Men's fault. Um, basically, uh, Empire, which rather or rather the uh, the Kree Skrull unification, which led to Empire. Um, that it occurred. That occurred um, shortly around the beginning of the Krakoan Age. Since then, there have been three annual Hellfire Galas. So either this takes place two years ago, or which distinctly possible. I won't mean, just say it does. You know, Nothing to say it doesn't, but yeah. Or, well, yeah. So, apparently, coffee has been brought to the uh, Kree Skull Alliance. The, uh, it appears most uh, off. Most, most, uh, not, most of those not really think the coffee tastes awful, and, well, I mean, it, it can. But, uh, big celebration for, uh, Unification Day. There's even a statue that's been erected of, uh, of Teddy. But uh, the festivities are attacked by Kree sentries. Kidnapping, they kidnap Kree children, as well as uh, Emperor Hulkling. They're, they were sent by the Supreme Intelligence, which is, of course, still around, causing trouble. Seeing. Uh, of course, the, uh, the the Supreme Intelligence sees Hulkling as Hulkling being the you know, emperor of the, the Kree Skull Alliance as uh, you know just how far the Kree have fallen. The idea is that the Kree the Supreme Intelligence means to basically brainwash uh, the children into the how things were before the unification. Carol uh, does what she can now fight, and uh, Hulkling switches place. Wicked switches places with Hulkling. Apparently, the Screw Intelligence tries to, to tell uh, Carol that, uh, 
all this time, she was being, it, uh, everything that the Kree had done to her was to make her the Emperor, but uh, true or not, doesn't that doesn't matter to Carol. That's not what she wants. And so, Supreme Intelligence is once again uh, stopped, and it seems that the kid, the, the kids, uh, the brainwashing the kids is reversed by the destruction of the Supreme Intelligence. And uh, they end with uh, Hulkling, Wiccan, and Captain Marvel watching the sunrise. We've got a backup story focusing on Monica Rambeau. She uh, gets a call from her dad. But basically, want to make sure she's okay. Apparently she had a dealing with, a, uh, with an interstellar being. Uh, on behalf of Sword, the interstellar being got uh, a little grabby with her though, and uh, there's there was a communicate there was basically basically just some uh, communication missteps, but uh, Monica was able to you know hash things out and uh, came came home and uh, you know wanted this particular dish. The noodle soup that her grandmother used to make. So she went home and cooked herself some soup. That is where the issue ends. It's a fun little one shot. Um, if I remember correctly, we're actually getting at the beginning of a new cat. Oh, I should actually check the back right quick. It, yes, it looks like we're getting a new. Uh, yeah, in, in a couple of weeks we're getting a new Captain Marvel ongoing, just as the uh, Dark Tempest miniseries is winding down. Looking forward to that. Moving on, though, to our next book, we've got Moon Knight, City of the Dead, number four. Where we left off, while Scarlet Scarab was attempting to get Khalil out of the City of the Dead, well... Moon Knight sacrificed himself to uh, Emmett, to Emmett the Destroyer, or the Devourer. Mm. In the land of the living, uh, Dr. Badir is attempting to uh, save Khalil. Inside Emmett, Mark Spector is reliving his sins. First time, first time he killed someone. being among them, but uh, Charles Scarab is trying to get uh, Khalil to the gate, gate of Osiris, but the Legion of the Unliving is uh, giving chase, and they're not making things easy for her. Then, uh, meanwhile, Mark is now faced with three, uh, three ghosts of his past. His father, Rabbi Elias Spector, Jean-Paul Frenchy, the champ, who mentored uh, Mark when he was at his lowest, and Raoul Bushman, the butcher who forged uh, Mark into the into what he is today. Elias and Frenchy are rather judgmental, while uh, Bushman is proud of uh, what he's turned Mark into. But uh, he's faced with ghosts of all, of all those he's killed as well. As usually a living chase, uh, Scarlet Scarab through the city, or through the Duat, it turns out that uh, as a Scarlet Scarab, Layla can, uh, can mold the Duat as she sees fit. Using this, basically using the city to attack uh, the, Legion, the Legion. But... Uh, Conchu, or Mark is further, you know, faced with all, all of his sins. Every, every gunshot, every stabbing, all blunt force trauma, all of it. He's feeling every single bit of it. And Conchu, he's faced with Conchu, who offers him a gun. 
to finish things. But uh, Dr. Peter goes to Dr. Peter Allred comes to him and says, hey, you know, maybe we should talk. But uh, Layla gets to the gate of Khalil, but uh, the guardians of the gates are stopped by the Jackal Knight, who manages to uh, take Osiris's power and raise the city of the dead to the land of the living. Turns out that uh, Dr. Allering, this is uh, Marlene's father, forgave him. Forgave Mark long ago. And you know, he's what? Allering's last words to Mark were to watch over or to protect his daughter. And he has, even when it's cost Mark everything. He's washed over, given, and they have a they have a child together. But uh, basically, that uh, that gets that pulls uh, Mark out of his funk, and he uh, and Emma suddenly appears in the city, and Mark cuts his way out. Saying that uh, when he's finished with his brother Randall, well, Randall's going to wish that uh, Emmett had, had had him. And that is where the issue ends. This book's uh, shaping up quite nice. I'm, I'm hoping that uh, Scarlet Scarab continues to pop up uh, in Moon Knight after this. But we'll see. Moving on, though, to our last book for the moment, we've got Cap Wolf and the Howling Commandos, number one. So, Cap Wolf is a, uh, is a concept, it's not, it's not a new concept. The concept is simple, though. Captain America, werewolf. Um, there was a Captain America story in the mid to late 80s, I believe, called A Wolf and Man, wherein the, at the time, villain, Nightshade, um, uh, basically turn Captain America into, for all intents and purposes, a werewolf. Um, I, I, haven't re I haven't read the story. I know of it. Uh, hell, I didn't even know Nightshade was a Marvel character until supervillain team of Mox Mo 11 and then in the mid-2000s. So, yeah. But, uh, so the Howling Commandos, uh, are participating in a raid. It's uh, in uh, France in 1944. The, the commandos survive, but uh, their squad leader, Sergeant Nick Fury, is uh, injured. Captain America shows up to help and manages to do so. But uh, Fury's laid up. There, but there's a new mission. Infiltrate, finding uh, a German base called uh, Wolfshans, means Wolf's Lair. Peter is laid his monument to his own ego. The bunker is just outside of uh, Rassenburg in eastern Prussia. But Fury is too injured to go. How the hell the commanders are being sent? Cap also volunteers, Cap volunteers to go, saying he'll go alone, but uh, it's thinking initially it's just a uh, intelligence gathering mission. Though that the bunker needs to be destroyed. And it's the commanders, the Hell commanders were needed. But Fury's in no shape to lead them, so. And uh, Fury states that they're going to need someone to lead him. And basically volunteers Cap for the job. Uh, the Howling Commandos ain't too fond of the idea of uh, working under Cap. Um, 
Dugan tends to think of it of him as, you know, Cap's not a soldier. He he's a mascot. That's all. He just does stuff for he does all, everything he does is for show. But uh, the Howling Mammoths jump out of the their airdrops. Uh, Cap issues a leaves with a parachute. And uh, and Wolf shuns. Uh, turns out that uh, the Germans are working with a uh, with a uh, mystical practitioner. I don't think she's ever identified. But uh, she's doing all you know. Various, you know, scrying through bones and blood and all that. But uh, the, Howler, the cab of the commandos land near the fairly close to the base. It's a bunker. And are attacked by werewolves. They manage to put the werewolves down, but Cap gets uh, scratched by one of them. And uh, Dugan, having seen Cap fight, is like, okay, or Cap in action, just says, okay, you know, I was wrong. And uh, also asks what Cap thinks that they would Jesus fought. And as Cap turns into a werewolf and says that. Uh, well, he thinks that Dugan may have to may have to kill him, and that is where the issue ends. Okay, this is this is fun. I I do love me a good uh, I do love me a good uh, tongue in cheek horror story set in World set in World War Two. I mean, the DC's Sergeant Ro Sergeant Rock versus Only the Dead comes to mind. Uh, movie Overlord. <laughs> Anyways, that's going to do it for now. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Mastodon, Patreon, and PayPal can be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying, live long and rock hard.